What is your I feel like these guys aren't really my friends moment. My wife and I had a small wedding. I didn't invite a ton of people but I invited 15 or so friends. Besides my best man, only one showed up. What's worse is that all these people said they were coming. I no longer put effort towards those friendships. That is messed up, when there is an RSVP option, and how much weddings can cost. Bro. Tried to invite them to an event I go to every year. Day of I go by myself and find out weeks later they went as a group without me. Frick, that's hard. They don't contact me at all unless I go out of my way to contact them first. They find any reason to not hang out. They claim we're good friends but it just feels like they just want to be able to say that I'm a friend without doing anything to be a friend. When I decided not to be the friend who always organized things and started conversations, I get no contact on the weekends and during the week. I noticed that if I kept quiet in a conversation, they wouldn't even notice I was there. I decided to throw a Super Bowl party a few years ago. I went out and bought a new grill and mounted a TV in the kitchen for people who wanted to hang out and snack while watching the game. Had tons of food and beer ready. 30 minutes before kickoff I got a text that the whole group decided to go to someone else's house and that I should bring all my food and beer over there. Needles to say, I didn't go, and I haven't thrown a party at my house since. I'm just sad reading this. That sucks so much. I know it doesn't mean much from a random stranger on the internet but I'm sorry that happened. Not me, but the kid who vandalized my house and car. After someone threw eggs and rocks at my house, and finished with a rock through my windshield, I left the car parked next to the street with a big poster on it with reward for information on it. Within hours the kid's friends turned him in for $10 each. I would have denied taking the $10 for ratting that kid out, unless he was peer pressured to do it. When I was the constant butt of their jokes, and they were thinly veiled insults that they gaslighted me into thinking I made up or that they were actual jokes made out of love. I feel this. Once when I tried to bring this up, they just said I couldn't take a joke, but their jokes always made me look so stupid. An easy answer for me, one year I had a sleepover party with a bunch of childhood friends from the neighborhood as a teen. It was really fun and I invited 15 or so kids, had to convince my parents and spent a ton of money to make it perfect for everyone. We went swimming in the pool, played dodgeball, kickball, had tons of food, had a nerf gun war, played pool, played video games, and watched movies. It was a blast and everyone was clearly enjoying themselves. Then they tried to watch a horror movie that my parents would kill me if I saw it, and I objected for a while before reluctantly putting it on. I hated horror movies, too, but I wanted them to have fun. It was like 1 in the morning. They got bored during the movie and asked if we could all go to the clubhouse. I lived in a gated community with a public clubhouse at the time, to meet up some girls in the middle of the night. I said that my parents would never let it happen and that I didn't want to get caught, so I told them we couldn't go. After that, about 5 of them left at like 2-3am to go without me. They said they'd be right back and that one of them needed their medicine so they went to get it. Within the hour, everyone was gone except me. I was crushed, and too embarrassed to tell my parents. So I finally put on the movie I wanted to watch before going to sleep. In the morning my parents were furious because over a dozen kids that they had promised their parents would be at their house had disappeared without a trace. A sad and tired me had to call all of them to figure out where they were and let all of their parents know that they didn't spend the night. Even though my parents made me do it, a lot of them got mad at me for that. The worst part by far was figuring out that they had all went to a different kid's house to spend the night after leaving mine. Well alrighty then. Frick those people. When you find out that people make plans regularly without you, most of my friends live a bit of a way away, so sometimes, those who live close together, or with each other, do stuff without me, which is fine, but we also do stuff together on a fairly regular basis. I've had friends who have just not bothered with the second part. Two of my friends were telling me about a concert they went to and said, you really should have been there that's great, maybe you could have invited me, or told me you were going. I was part of a group of friends. About 20 of us would get together at least once a month but cliques started forming within the group and I found myself in the middle of them. 
I lived about 30 minutes away from most of them so sometimes they'd hang out without me even though I told them I'd drive to hang out. I never got invited. The final straw was planning my birthday, sent a FB invite to the group and mutual friend acquaintances only to be reminded by an acquaintance that one of my friends from the group was having a big party that same day. I wasn't invited to that party. I still had mine with the few good friends I, still, have and I haven't really talked to the other group since. Wow what fake people, you deserve better seriously. I used to go out for dinner with some college friends. Unlike me, they'd order multiple cool drinks and the most expensive things on the menu. Then, when the huge bill arrived, they'd say, let's just keep it simple and divide it equally. The guys knew I was paying double or triple what I should have, but that didn't seem to bother them. This happened to me once so now I'm an butthole that says on a separate bill. After group orders. When I was hanging out with my real friends and felt at ease and calm with them, made me realize that my other friends gave me anxiety. Our group of around 6 was all out playing basketball except I only found out when I went outside to do errands cause of how bored I was at home. Not only that but I also heard they came near my place to use our internet to message our other friend to come play with them. That really fricked with me and I never felt the same around them. Change the Wi-Fi password. Two situations, both had to do with education. First, was after passing my olivals. My friends flunked, and some of them actually told me that I was hiding the fact that I was studying and influenced them to fail. I used to fail all the time throughout my years, but when it got to olivals, I put my work in. A second situation was when I mentioned to friends that I'm heading to university. We were all in a car and smoking up, and they all started laughing and saying that university won't help, or that there's no point in me specifically going to university. None of them attended university. They also have rich backgrounds. At least some of them do. I thought about how I would react if I were in their shoes, and that's when I realized that they kinda suck. None of the people I used to hang out with and see on a regular basis reach out to me after I moved away. The ones that do are all former co-workers. I guess I should have hung out with the people at work more than the people I thought were my friends. I wish there was a way to know you're in the good old days before you've actually left them. When my father passed none of my friends showed up to the funeral. It was an hour and a half away so when they made up excuses not to come I said I understood, I didn't. Surprisingly two of my neighbors that I barely know showed up. I'm friend with them now. I was in a friend's group of 11, really close, hung out a lot, oddly enough, everyone coupled up, I was the only non-couple from the group, my gf wasn't from the pack, eventually I found out that they met up very often without inviting me and I was just phased out, we had a whatsapp group but it was quite underutilized, in the end, I just left the group, just wait till they all start to break up, yik yes. When they joked about my suicide attempt, really broke me. No matter what the context, that's a crappy thing to do. Ignoring me for months and months at a time but posting selfies online. Only coming around when I have drugs. Gossiping about me. I had all the friends in the world when I was selling doing. That one I feel. I started a new job recently and a few of my co-workers and have asked me about myself and gotten to know me. In a meeting last week two girls asked if I had any animals. I let them know I had a cat and they asked if they could see a picture. The meeting hadn't started yet and so I quickly went to my desk and got my phone. I came back and it was still just us in the room. I showed them the picture and put my phone in my pocket afterwards. I recently had my 30 day review and was told that me being on my phone during meetings was unprofessional and that I had offended someone in the office. When I asked which meeting my boss was referring to, he mentioned the one from last week. They were the only ones there at the time it happened, and I didn't get out my phone again so it must have been them. Really crappy way to start a job. Man frick them. Seriously. Pictures of the group of them at events I hadn't been invited to began appearing on Facebook. Then they started directly referring to and discussing these activities I hadn't been invited to in front of me. With the excuse of we didn't think you'd be interested. So we didn't tell you. Then they started making plans in front of me. Always with a oh. But not you. This is an us thing. 
and only so many people can go. Maybe next time. In two and a half years, there never seemed to be a next time. Frick man. I hate that. I went through that for five years myself. After that, school ended no contact from almost everyone in the group. Pull the classic move of cancelling an event that everyone was invited to and then actually attending the event with a select group of people. With friends on a trip to Japan, drinking one night in Rapongi district, I'm trying to taper off. Karen no, really, it was her name, keeps putting drinks in front of me, paying the bartender for weird shots for me, but not for anyone else in the group. She's saying really catty crap, but laughing like it's all good fun, with pals. She starts saying some pointed stuff that makes me think she's been holding on to some really ugly resentment for a while. After I'm good and sloshed, she pushes me over to my partner and tells him to grab a taxi and take me back. On the way back to the hotel I'll look at my partner and say, I didn't realize until now that Karen hates me, he replied. She sure seems to, neither the trip nor the friendship was the same after that night. And I had the worst hangover of my entire life, passed out on the floor of a Tokyo hotel bathroom. So awful. Hopefully you can all will return and make better memories on your next trip. So basically it was the end of term so around 40-45 classmates agreed we would go to town after school eat take pictures etc. Although it was not strict invites only as they made it seem like everyone in the year were invited. The boys that I thought were the closest friends there were surprised at me coming eventually we split some went to McDonald's other Burger King etc. We then regrouped for a group photo. At this point another 10 students that weren't initially going came making around 50-55 people there. So one popular guy prepared to take a picture. Then some others were like why is purple juice in it let him take it this picture literally had 70% of my so called friends. I didn't feel good at all. No one offered to swap and no it was not because I'm a great photographer. Capital F. I was planning my birthday party last year and when people showed up early and saw me working, nobody offered to help with anything. When a friend I was very close with texted me for the first time after several months of nothing and it was about a pyramid scheme he was trying to recruit more people for, I was one of a dozen or so on the text. If it's any consolation, it's likely that other guy's social life is doing very poorly after that decision. A friend punched me in the stomach as the bus passed to look cool. I just accepted it until I thought about it later in the week or so. A friend hope you revenge for it soon enough. When my friend asked me to go out with her the next day, then cancelled BC she was going out with her parents and then I went out with my mum the next day to kill some time and saw my friend having lunch with 4 other people. Freaking ouch, sorry that happened. Every time I would spend time with them, it completely drained me from listening to all of their problems. I realized I was the therapist friend, rather than someone they actually cared about. I hate the fact I care but they could care less. You deserve more than that. Had a friend purchase a bunch of tickets for our group of friends for the midnight premiere of Jurassic World a few years ago. There was probably 16 tickets purchased, and I was pumped to go, the day of the showing. He texts me at like 4, and says that there's not enough tickets for me, because he forgot to buy my ticket. I pressed him on this, and asked him how of the 16, how was it my ticket he didn't purchase? He backdailed, and claimed I told him I didn't even want to go. So I texted him screenshots of the 5 times I told him how I wanted to see it, when we discussed we were going to be at the theater, etc. So then he came right out and said it. He was giving my ticket to his new GF he just started seeing the week prior. I was P and ripped him a new butthole. But the worst part is, none of the other 16 people that went ever said a word to him about it. It was at that point I realized they didn't really give a crap about me. I no longer talk to any of them due to some other things that happened last year. But that's a story for another day. Dang that sucks mate. I hope you found a better group of friends. At times I think it's when you can go forever without having them reach out. This only holds true if you are the one initiating. I've had groups of friends that all manage to stay in touch and I never hear from them. It happens. I was roommates with said friend before we actually started hanging out. 
It started nice, gossip here and there, mutual loathing for our crappy professor, but then she started drama with the club we both go to and started ruining it for me by constantly stringing the guys in the club along. It was obvious they flirted with her and she did too and she would manipulate them into buying her stuff. So gradually to avoid drama, I stopped going to club and talking to her. So she kept telling our mutual friends. Oh, I don't know why but she, meaning me, is mad at me and ignoring me, I didn't do anything, and generally paint me as the bad guy. For your information this girl never asked me anything, greet me or try talking to me like she said she did. She then started saying how I owed her for all the things she paid for, which confused me because every time I offered to pay her back she would decline and said it was no problem or I would pay her back if the thing bought was too expensive. This went on for the rest of the year and I was so depressed when all the Loki crap she would say to our mutual friends came back to me because they wanted both sides of the story. Luckily, she got academic probation because I stopped doing her HW for money and she never did her work so I don't have to see her anymore or be roommates. My core group of HS friends had an entire night while I was working late where the running joke was how they could frick with my life because my reactions to chaos were funny. I don't mean pranks. I'm talking. Who should sleep with his ex should one of the women here date him and have it be really dramatic so he's stressed out all sorts of scenarios about doing real damage to my life in serious ways and cackling. This was the same crew who, when one of the dudes slept with said ex 6 hours after we broke up, called me immature for being hurt. When I asked them about it individually, they each said that my feelings being hurt by the convo meant I needed to learn to take a joke. I walked away from them entirely pretty much on the spot and didn't look back. Two decades later, I hear things occasionally about them through random connections or social media. Most of them are professionally mediocre social train wrecks. Really drove home that the best revenge is living a better life than the people who did you wrong. In 6th grade my friend ruined it with me and the girl I liked, then continued to physical and verbally attack me to let out his stress. When all the airmen in my flight got busted using spice in 2012 and all got together and got their story straight about embellishing the amount of spice consumed at my parties back in 08 and keeping their use at zero minimal. The prosecutor made me sound like Charles Manson at my trial and like I led all these poor kids astray. The truth is, they were smoking the crap in training and then brought it to their duty station and that's where I first seen it. Someone brought it to one of my parties and we smoked a joint. It wasn't even banned until 10 but I was convicted of use. Possession and distribution in 2012 fuse before 10 where distribution is defined as the movement from one individual to another. They said that since I passed a joint, that it was destro. I was reduced from E6 to E1. Forfeiture of pay for 3 months and 6 months confinement. Made it out with a general under honorable conditions discharge and still get all my benefits. Was 14 years in when all this happened. Sad to think that I would be retired right now. You got above E4. You were no longer in the mafia. Seriously though, that is some bulls. Well, there was the time I had a party and no one came. It was hilarious. I don't bother with friends anymore. Now I read. A friend at work had her son's first birthday party. Her whole family was there. We showed up with our daughter and were the only non-family that didn't cancel last minute. Something like 6 other couples kids cancelled. The kids had a blast but it was sad to see. They had party favors and nice mylar balloons for the kids. We left with 6 balloons. When my girlfriend, who had become part of the group, started cheating on me with a friend from the group, everyone just said they didn't want to choose sides. Yeah I don't want to choose any of you either. That was the same excuse that my former best friend said to me when I was raped by another one of her friends. Yeah, this isn't a situation where that's a reason. When they threw a rock at my dog, everything ended right there. Contacted me a few months later to hang. Nah, don't ever contact me again bro. Dogs. People. I recently invited a friend over to watch the election results roll in, nerdy I know, but it is a bit of a tradition we have had for over 20 years. He spent the whole night playing two poker tournaments on his mobile phone, making almost no conversation. He crashed at my place that night, and I told him that I needed to start work at 10am the next morning, 
he has a bit of a reputation for being hard to get rid of. The next morning I made us breakfast at 9am, and then a Teddy decided he needed to use the bathroom, took his phone in there, and didn't come out for 40 minutes. Then I reminded him that I needed to start work. He took 30 minutes to put his shoes on, all the while repeatedly checking his phone. Once he had his shoes on he then told me he was just going to have a couple of cigarettes before leaving. He sat outside in my courtyard for another 30 minutes, and then just walked away. No thanks for having me over, or thanks for breakfast, or good to see you, or even goodbye. Just walked away. Then he sat in his car across the street smoking another cigarette. That is, he was deliberately being a dong when he chose to smoke in the courtyard, just because he knew I was eager to get to work. This was the same guy who a few years back was 3 hours late to come over for dinner, partly because he stopped for a freaking burger en route, and the same guy who showed up 6 hours late to my daughter's second birthday party, and just didn't show at all to my 40th birthday. I reflected on it afterwards and realized that he's not really one of my oldest friends. He's just some dickhead I've known for a long time. Needless to say, he'll be receiving no more invitations from me. Six hours late for a second birthday party is just straight up not showing. Kids parties are like two hours. Gather the kids, eat food, open presents, fill them with sugar, let them run, then get out of my house. Best friend called me a snake behind my back because I was being quiet due to a depressive episode. Figured it was my fault for not making it clear about my situation. Later found out she knew I was depressed and just didn't care. I'm pretty late to the post so it won't be seen by much. But it was when they almost shot me in the head. They were about to drive me home. We were teenagers. Just able to drive. And I saw them messing around in his dad's room as I was getting ready. We get in his parents car. I'm in the passenger seat. He's driving. The other is behind me. All of the sudden it felt like my ears popped and there was just a loud high pitched ringing that wouldn't stop. And right in front of me at the dashboard was a hole that wasn't there before. Just an inch or so to my left. I looked back and saw him holding a gun. Which I guess they took from his dad's room to play around with and look cool. And when I started freaking out they started getting pee off at me to be quiet because his dad might notice. He was mowing the grass by us but had those giant headphones on. They forced me to sit calmly for the ride and made me swear not to tell anyone. I was pretty shaken and also sort of afraid of them so I never did. I wish I had, but my parents might have killed them. I was grounded for a while, and when I was finally able to leave they said this to me. We're so glad to see you again. We had to walk around everywhere. I was the only one with a car at the time. There was two instances with the same group of friends when I was 15. They would show up at my house to hang out and would just spend the next few hours getting off with their boyfriends. Same group of friends for my 16th birthday. I'd planned bowling cinema and one by one they dropped out a few days beforehand. For one of them, who I thought was my best friend, straight out said she didn't want to see the movie I'd picked out for my birthday but got her boyfriend to call me to tell me they weren't going. The friendships with that group fizzled out a few years later. My best friend and I had a falling out. She instigated it, and the other friends never bothered to contact me afterwards. It's been 20 years and I'm really surprised none of them have contacted me with one of those hey girl hey hun spam messages from an MLM scheme, because they would definitely be the kind of people who would get caught up in that crap. In middle school, we had a school day trip to a park with a swimming pool, mini golf, etc. My three best friends all said they weren't going to swim, so I didn't bring my suit. When we got there, they all had their suits and towels. They said they changed their minds about swimming but forgot to let me know. I had to play mini golf alone while they swam. This was all communicated by phone the evening before. I do think they were real friends, but they clearly didn't consider me as close a friend as they considered each other. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
bye for now.